Hello and welcome. In today's video, I'd like to talk about the Madcats Fight Pad Pro. This controller um, has received quite a bit of negative reviews online, and today I'd like to share my impressions of this controller. And I didn't just get one, but I got two of them, um, just so that I can have a spare controller in case something breaks. Um, so you may have noticed that I, I quite like the controller. Um, I'm not trying to be a contrarian, but um, I like. I'll tell you why I like the controller later. Just to give you a better idea of where I'm coming from. Um, before I got the controller, I was using um, the standard Xbox One controller to play. Um, Street Fighter 5 and I'm more of an analog stick player um, than the D-pad I don't use the D-pad at all because um, I just didn't think it works well um, so I'm quite used to not having any tactile feedback um, on my direction control so that's number one and number two which is also quite important is I didn't pay full price for um, the c both of these controllers so I paid around slightly more than 30 euros for each of them and um, I got them at Amazon used but they were um, almost new so they look um, and smell just as new so I didn't have a problem with that and if you are interested in getting one of them there are many of them floating around um, at Amazon and on eBay as well so um, I actually intended to give uh, to make an unboxing video but um, this box is very loud to open so t I decided against it Anyway, just there's some cool artwork here, and I'll show you the, um, the contents of the box and some Street Fighter branding here. And it's an official licensed product. So, yeah, um, it's the back of the box, um, lots of boring text. So, I'm not gonna bore you with that. And I'm gonna put it there. And inside the box, you get a leaflet. Um, showing you the features and it's kind of like an instruction leaflet but I guess um, it's quite self-explanatory and the other thing you get is um, Mad Cats sticker so if you like to proclaim your love for Mad Cats you can stick it on your um, laptop or your computer anyway let me just put them aside and let me bring in the controllers. So the first one I got was the white version. There are a total of four versions um, white, red, blue for Chun Li, and black for Bison. So the white versions for Ryu, um, and you can see here uh, um, there's this little symbol here, which is a symbol found on Ryu's. Um, gloves in the game and there's an official branding here um, SF5 branding here and this I got this about a month ago and I like it so much that I got a spare version I got a spare copy so for my spare I got um, the can one which is red and instead of the symbol um, you got a show you can input here I think it's quite cool um, yeah so uh, I'd like to just give you a very quick tour of the controller and I'll use the white one to show you because it's um, it shows up better on screen so um, on the front side you get the, the d-pad which is more like a circular disc and this is the one that most people have problem with um, on this controller. 
I'll talk about it uh, a bit later on. And then here you get a um, analog stick. So the analog stick, um, you can program it using the switch here. You can program it to be, you can select um, this to be the right stick or the left stick. Uh, you can switch it toggle. Um, this toggle switch here. And then uh, in the front there's also a PlayStation 4 button. Sorry, PlayStation button. And that's a light bar. So I'm using this with my PC. And this is compatible with the PC. You just have to download a driver from Madcat's website. Um, but on the PC, the PlayStation button, the touchpad, um, which is a bit clicky. And the light bar doesn't work. They do not work at all. And then the six face button. Um, this the six face buttons are the main reason why I got um, the fight pad because you know place um, Street Fighter is played with six buttons, three punches and three kicks, and this is quite useful if you're playing um, Street Fighter. So on the bottom, there's this selector so you can toggle between right stick or anal sorry. This is no, sorry. This is the PS4, PS3 toggle. So it's compatible with both PS3 and PS4, and then you can get the analog switch toggle here, and then you get your select and start button, which are a bit hard to press, so you don't accidentally press them during um, when you're playing using the controller. And then on the top, there are two triggers the left and right trigger and then your um, left and right um, clicky buttons so some people have problems with um, the R2 button being triggers so I don't use them much so I don't have much problems with that and then on top there's also a toggle switch um, do I see there's a like this there's also a toggle switch here, so you can switch between the standard L1, L2, um, and R1, sorry, R1, R2, and L1, L2. Or you can switch it to L1, L2, and L3, R3. So you can basically switch this, um, change the function of the buttons here, and the trigger here. So that's about it for um, the controller. Here's the rear side. You can see it. It's a bit strange. Um, it's strangely edgy, but um, it sits just fine in the hand. And the cable is three meters long and hot wired. So if it breaks, um, you're out of luck. You can swap it out. So um, that's about it for um, the controller. There's not much else to it. So let me talk about the quality, um, build quality. Um, it feels one of the complaint was about this controller was um, it feels light, and yeah, it does feel lighter. It's um, actually a bit lighter than the Xbox One controller, which. Um, by itself, it feels already quite light in the hand. But because this doesn't have any rumble or any features, and this feels even lighter, which isn't maybe isn't a bad thing at all. I guess if you uh, if you want to hold this thing for in the hand for in your hand for a long time, um, it doesn't weigh it, it doesn't weigh on your hands. And another thing that people are encountering problems with is um, the buttons. So some people are experiencing like sticky buttons. So the sticky button means that you know when you press the buttons, they don't they don't immediately spring back 
um, but rather they kind of stick to the bottom and slowly be sort of spongy instead of being tactile. So um, I've been using this for the past month and I didn't notice any problems with that. Um, so maybe MacCats has a poor production batch. Um, so mm, I don't know. I don't have that problem. With, I didn't encounter that problem. And you know, build quality wise, the only thing I have problem with is um, the analog stick. So the analog stick, um, I did initially use the analog stick for about a week or so and I'm not too sure if you can see it but analog stick the rubber layer on the analog stick is you know it's a bit worn out from a week of use. So that could be I think um a bit of a problem. And yeah. Otherwise build quality wise I think this thing is quite well built. It doesn't creak when I do my very scientific um, torsion test which involve kind of just kind of twisting the controller in opposite directions and yeah so the second thing that people have problem with is um, the analog stick being too close to the d-pad so that when you're trying to execute a command, um, for example like this, you kind of touch the analog stick by accident. And I mean, the way I solved it is I switch it to the right stick. So I make this the right stick instead of the left. And in Street Fighter V, the right stick doesn't do anything. So even if I accidentally touch it, um, nothing happens. So it doesn't affect my game. And let me go. Um, uh, let's come to the elephant in the room, the D-pad. This is the one that everyone, the many reviewers have problems with. They say the D-pad is not tactile, which I agree, and they would prefer a cross. Um, many would prefer a cross D-pad, D-pad with a cross layout like um, the Xbox One D-pad. It's a bit clicky. And it you know, has a cross layout. Um, but I, you know, initially when I got this controller, I had problems using the D-pad. So I have to be honest, I spent quite a while and I was ready to give up the D-pad and continue using my, using the analog stick. Then it took me about two days. So for two days I was determined to learn how to use this d-pad um, and I spent two days in training mode trying to learn um, how to use this correctly and I think most people who are used to using the d-pad you know, when they use the controller they tend to do for example if you want to do a Hadouken motion, you try to flick, they try, they tend to flick the d-pad um, but in my experience, from my experience I can say it works better if you not flick the d-pad but rather rest your thumb like this, um, if I can show you better and just roll your thumb um, instead of flicking like this um, it works much better that way and now I can safely say that if I miss an input it's my fault and it's not the fault it's not the d-pad's fault if I miss an input because I'm actually very um, comfortable using it uh, with the d-pad and of course some people may prefer a bit more um, tactile feeling here but um, I guess I'm not that big on I, I'm not that big on tactile feedback for my d-pad and so if you have this controller sitting in your drawer because you don't like the d-pad I would encourage you to try resting your thumb and rolling your thumb instead um, 
Let me show you once more, like this. So you want to do your quarter second motions like this instead of doing this. It makes um, it's actually quite forgiving if you um, put some time into learning how to use it. And the only thing that I'm a bit disappointed is this. The white version works perfectly. I mean, I don't have any problems with the white version, and maybe I got a poor production copy. But the red version, the can version, has a even mushier. It feels just feels mushy. It doesn't feel as good as the white version. Um, at first, I thought um, it was just I was just imagining. Um, it was just my imagination, but um, I put them side by side, and then I was playing around with them, and this thing is feels a bit different um, from the white version, which is a bit of a shame. Um, it's not unusable, but it's just strange that you know two similar controllers or two same controllers just feels different um, when it comes to something as important as the d-pad so I don't know production quality control it's a bit dodgy there and the last thing I want to mention is is this thing worth its retail price of $70 um, I wouldn't have bought this thing if I wouldn't have bought the controllers if they have costed if I have to pay seventy dollars for one of them, I wouldn't have bought the controllers in the first place because I think it's not worth seventy dollars. Um, you see, they there there isn't any built in rumble, which is you know which makes sense because you don't want your pet rumble when you are fighting someone online or when you're playing the game. Um, it doesn't have a wireless module, which also makes sense um, because you want to reduce input lag. And um, but so they didn't add all these features. So I like this. This thing retails for sixty, for slightly less than sixty euros, and this thing goes for seventy euros, even though they are saving on. Um, some technology so they don't have to no build in rumble no moto less cost um, they're not passing the savings to consumers which is a little bit um, yeah and I just don't think it's worth $70 but if you can pick it up for about 30 40 euros I'll pay 40 euros for this thing um, anytime because I really like it and yeah, that's about it. So at retail is poor value, but you can get them quite cheap um, online nowadays. And yeah, that's my impression of um, the Mad Cats Fight Pack Pro. And some of you may be watching this for the review, but um. If you stay for the review, and if you come for the review, and if you stay for the ASMR, um, I would like to invite you to check out other ASMR videos on my channel or on YouTube. So you can go to your YouTube search bar and type in ASMR, and you can get a whole lot of content for you. And yeah, thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions or comment, please let me know in the comment section below. I'll try to answer um, them as quickly and um, as much as possible. And yeah, that's it for today. It's I think it's the longest video I've made um, on for this channel. And thank you very much for watching. And until next time, bye.